Welcome Trailblazers to today's Salesforce CPQ tutorial video where we'll be taking a look at CPQ product rules and go over some basic configuration to help you get started on using the product rules. First, let's go to the product rules object and see what the field options are and what they mean. First is field name. This is pretty straightforward and simply the rule name good to make sure it's named something relevant to what the rule does. Next, we have type. First is validation. When this condition is met, an error will display and it'll prevent you from saving the product configuration you're trying to set up. This works similar to object validations. Next is selection. When this condition is met, it'll automatically add or suggest the designated products. Next is alert. When this condition is met, a message warning will show, similar to validation type, but won't prevent you from saving the product configuration. And last is filter. When this condition is met, a filter will refine product option lookups when using dynamic bundles. Next is scope. This will indicate where to apply the product rule. By default, we have either quote or product. Next is evaluation event. This helps indicate when and how the product rule will be checked. Here we have load that will make the product rule check on loading of a new quote. Edit will make the product rule check when editing the quote. Save. This will make the product rule check when you save the quote. And always. This will make the product rule check at all times. So on load, edit, and save. In general, this is the best option to make sure that the product rules are enforced at all times. Next is evaluation order. This one is important because it will specify in what order the rule will be evaluated. Any integer can be written here and the evaluation goes from 1 to x. This helps specify which rule should be checked first before others and higher order rules will take precedent over lower order rules in case of a conflict. Next is active. It's pretty straightforward. It just indicates if the rule is active or not. Then it's condition. This one is important because it indicates the logic of the rules set similar to a formula. You're given the options of any, all, or custom. Next is advanced condition. This is tied to the previous field where if you select the custom option, you have the ability to indicate the specific logic here using a series of and or statements and the error condition index, which we'll see later. And finally, we have the message field, which will display a custom message for when the validation or alert product rule is selected. Below these fields, we have a section called local query information. We won't be taking a look at that today, but just know that this is in case you want the product rule to evaluate field values on objects other than quotes. Now that we've gone over each field, we can get started on making a product rule. For this, we're going to be doing two product rules, a validation and a selection product rule. Let's start by giving it a name. Here, we're going to do no more than five kilowatt batteries. For type, let's select validation. For scope, quote. For evaluation event, we're going to do always. For this, we don't need evaluation order, so let's leave that blank. Next is active. Select that to true. Conditions met, all. Advanced condition, this will be blank since it's all conditions and not custom. And finally, is message. Let's do something simple like, can I add more than five kilowatt batteries on this quote? We can hit save. From here, we can create an error condition so that our product rule triggers. But before we can configure the error condition, we need to make sure that the fields we're going to be checking, in this case, product name and quantity, are available for selection on the error condition object as a tested field. Because as we can see here, if we go to tested field, all we have available right now is unit price. So from here, let's go to setup. Object manager. On the quick find, let's type in error, error condition, fields and relationships, Scroll down to tested field. Scroll down a bit more. And here we have a pick list with all the available tested fields. 
product code and quantity are already here. But if you need to add new ones, you can simply select new. And here you can type in or paste the field API name that you want to include in the error condition. Make sure that it is in fact the API name and not the label or else it will not work. Once that's done, we need to make sure that the pixels option is available in the right field on the error condition. So let's go back to fields and relationships, field dependencies, edit on the tested object and tested field dependency. And here under quote line, which is the object that we will be working with, we need to make sure that it includes the necessary fields. In our case, product code, and quantity, include values, and save. Click OK, and now we're good to go. So now that that's done, we can continue setting up our error condition. So let's go back. First, we need to refresh the page to make sure that the changes are updated. Select new again, and here we have a set of new fields index it's not important for this demo since our condition is all but we can put one tested object quote line tested field here we can see the two new fields that we added in addition to the field that was already present so here let's select product code tested variable and tested attribute can be left blank operator equals filter type value in filter value, we're going to set up 10 kilowatt battery. I have the product here already open, so I'm going to make sure I copy the product code exactly as it is. Go back, paste, and save. And that's our first error condition. But now we want to add a second error condition because all this is doing right now is just verifying that the product being added is the 10 kilowatt battery. So let's go back and select new. Index here. Again, does not matter in this case because it's going to be all, but we can put two. For tested object, quote line, tested field, let's do quantity this time. Tested attribute and tested variable, we're going to leave blank again. Operator is going to be greater than, in this case. Filter type is value. And filter value, we're going to select five. And then save. So here, now we have our two error conditions and our product rule is complete. What this product rule is going to be doing is that it's going to check for the product that we specified in this case, the 10 kilowatt battery. And if more than five are being added to the quote, it's going to give out our error message that we see here on the message field. That's it for this validation product rule, but let's add one more to see how two different rules can work together to help out your users back to product rules new give it a new name add a 15 inch laptop in this case for type we're going to be doing selection scope is still quote evaluation event always evaluation order here doesn't really matter so we can leave that blank again active to true conditions met all and once again, advanced condition is blank since the condition is all and not custom. And for this one, we don't need a message since it will automatically be adding a product and we can leave it blank. So let's hit save. Let's scroll down a little bit. And under error conditions, let's hit new. Same as before, index here can be left blank, but we can add one. Tested object is quote line. Tested field, product code. For operator, equals, filter type, value. And filter value, we're going to be adding the 10 kilowatt battery once more. And hit save. Same as before, and to reiterate, error condition is simply letting the product rule know which product to apply this rule to. Now, unlike before, we'll be setting up an action this time. Select new. Type. Here, we can indicate the type of action. In this case, we want to add a product when the error condition is met. 
In this case, the 10 kilowatt battery is the air conditioner. So let's select add. Under product, we can specify what product to add when the condition is met. Here, we can select 15 inch laptop. Typing the product rule can also help you find it easier. And the last, but very important field here is to make sure that required is set to true. Otherwise, the product rule will not add the product selected. Scrolling down, we can see filter information. We're not using a filter, so this section can be left blank. Now we hit save. And that's it. We have our two product rules set up. The first one will check to make sure that the product 10 kilowatt battery isn't being sold in quantities of more than five. And the second product rule will include a 15 inch laptop to the quote when a 10 kilowatt battery is added. But before we can finish up the video, let's make sure the rules are working. Here, I already have a quote created and empty. So let's try to add that 10 kilowatt battery to the quote and see what happens. Let's select edit lines. Add products. Let's select 10 kilowatt battery. Select. Perfect. Here we can see the 15 inch laptop was automatically added to the quote as per our product rule. This of course came with the pre-configuration bundle we have set up before as well. So if you want to or need to configure the product further, you can simply do so by reconfiguring the line in the little wrench icon. Additionally, if you don't want to include the added product, you can also delete the line and sell the original 10 kilowatt battery by itself using the trash can icon, like so. This won't incur any penalties unless that's another product rule that's being set up that doesn't let you do so. Now, let's see if the quantity product rule is working by setting the quantity to greater than five and saving. So let's set six and save. Perfect. Our custom error message is letting the user know that we can add more than five batteries to this quote. So let's go ahead and put five and save. That's it. Now you know how to set up a product rule using validation and select configurations. Thank you guys for watching and let's keep blazing the trails ahead.